He's my Uncle Scotty. He looks like a hero to me. Many 10-year-olds have heroes, but typically they are superheroes like Spider-Man or Superman. But for Dale Vernelli, it's his uncle, Master Corporal Scott Francis Vernelli. Three years ago, he was killed when an improvised explosive device detonated near him during a dismounted patrol west of Kandahar City. Now Dale relies on a few treasured memories with his godfather. Me and my Uncle Scotty, when he was alive, he used to play video games with me and all sorts of stuff. Usually I only see him if he gets off of uh, Afghanistan. I usually get to see him for like uh, two days or a week maybe. <laughs> I miss him and I would like to see him again. Coming right actually from the young soldier's sister-in-law remembers the day like it was yesterday when her family's life changed forever. On March 20th, 2009, my um, father-in-law called the boat quarter to seven that night or that morning, and um, it was unlike him to call. So my mother answered the phone, and um, my husband said when he heard that it was his father, he knew something was really, really wrong. And I was in another room, and I woke up to my husband screaming. They just received news that their son, brother, and father of six-month-old Olivia, at only 28 years old, the Sault Ste. Marie, Ontario native, was one of four soldiers killed only two weeks prior to his return home from his third tour in Afghanistan. We didn't really believe it. I know I didn't. I thought it was just a big mistake and he was going to come home and they were going to call us and everything was going to be fine. It was just hitting the news at 5 o'clock and there was Scotty doing an interview with his little baby and, um, and all four soldiers being killed. So it kind of hit us at that point and we realized that it wasn't a, really a dream. It was real and um, so yeah, and we got into Ottawa and kind of took it from there with the repat and everything. Nothing could prepare the family for their last meeting with Scott and the outpouring of support they received from perfect strangers. I, I can remember coming down this road three years ago, March, and, and, and seeing everybody lined up uh, to the streets of, of Toronto, um, over the highway heroes, over the underpasses, and there's, there's people at supper time with their babies and, and grandmothers and grandfathers and they're all waiting for us to come by so they can bless us and say thank you. And I can remember putting my hand out at the limo and, and saying thank you and they're going, no, thank you. And I wasn't getting that. I wasn't understanding it until we did this, our first one. And um, it's odd because we're on the other side of the limo now. We're watching them so we know what they're going through. You came right down here. Right down here, yeah. And then you went just off the left in the coroner's office. Yeah turned left and um, they dropped all four soldiers off and then uh, yeah and we went on our way. They have found comfort themselves through their faith and from an organization called Canadian Heroes founded by philanthropist Chris Eckland whose mission is to support the families of our fallen heroes. Uh, being with Canadian Heroes has helped us and supported us through um, the whole thing. Um, people don't understand how we can come to do the repats and we find it it's a it's a proper grieving process um, any kind of uh, festivals or anything to get the word out about it that's why that helps us uh, talking with other families uh, we've come um, a rapport with a lot of the fallen families and we all kind of know what each other's going through and um, so it's very very helpful and just family and friends just like the rest of his family Kerry says it was Master Corporal Scott Vernelli's faith that carried him through the battlefields. My father-in-law uh, had kept um, his mother's rosary and she has passed. So when Scotty went on in his first and second and third tours, um, he gave um, his mother's rosary to Scott and said, you make sure you keep this with you always. So the night of the wake, um, the Padre came in um, and brought us into a room. And she pulled out this envelope, and inside the envelope was a little piece of tissue in a square. And she unraveled the tissue, and she said, this was found, and they sent it to me to give to you. And we opened it up, and was his rosary. And I can remember calling, actually, the principal of St. Mary's School, of my son's school, and saying, 
and telling him the story. Um, Dale goes to a Catholic school and and Mr. Zanutini saying, yes, Carrie, that's how strong somebody's faith is for that to come back and to be a part, part of your family still. But even through the painful memories, there are happy ones, like their competition of opposing NHL teams. Dale strives to be just like his hero. Dale joined um, Navy cadets a little while ago, and he's ready to start Army cadets. He wants to do that because this is what he wants to do for his Uncle Scotty. He wants to, you know, follow in his footsteps and, and be just like Uncle Scotty. So. On this day, Dale, his mom, and three-year-old brother Cole, who only met his Uncle Scotty once when he was just two months old, came to the repatriation ceremony of Master Corporal Byron Greff, along with hundreds of other proud Canadians. Why did you come to pay your respects here today? I've done this uh, for quite a few of them, almost all of them. Uh, originally, when it started happening, this impromptu event, uh, the family started saying how much it meant to them. Uh, I come because it's my way of showing appreciation for the sacrifices that the family has made in raising a citizen that has sacrificed his life for what he believes in. We're here to see the soldiers home, standing as honour guards for them, uh, for their families, making sure that uh, their sacrifices are recognized by the families, that it, it makes a difference to the average Canadian, you know, that they're over there serving this country and, and doing uh, what needs to be done. Well, it's a thing that they take their life and go over and so we can sit here and relax. At least we can do when one passes is come over here and pay our deep respects to the soldier and the family. Well, I've been to most of the repatriations, and uh, it's just a mark of respect for the man that died, but also for the family. And I think it helps the family a great deal. Well, you know it does when you see them waving at the cars and, and you see their feelings when, uh, when they come by. So it's, it's, to, it's to pay tribute to them and show solidarity. Just a few moments ago, Canada's 158th fallen soldier came up this road and entered into this building. There are times in our lives that create memories that will last a lifetime. For me, it was one of those times. Not just this Remembrance Day, but every day. Please pray for our Canadian heroes and their families. Well, the message is uh, we love them, we respect them, Overseas, uh, for our troops, uh, I will send uh, God bless you. We really care about what you're doing. We really respect and appreciate everything that you're doing for us and know that uh, you'll never be forgotten and we prefer you to come home alive and happy, but when you don't, we're here for you then as well. I'm proud of the uh, Canadian values that they're representing. I'm proud of the way they're doing that and I envy them the opportunity to go out there and do it. I hate to use the term be safe, but yes, be safe, and we're praying for you, and hopefully this is our last time here. He's a wonderful guy. We miss him. Greater love has no one than this, to lay down one's life for one's friends.